Dolphins today is presented by Aura, a all-in-one digital safety tool. You can start your 14-day free trial at Aura.com slash chat sports. Dolphins fans, welcome into today's show. I am Will Scott, and on today's show, I'm going to be answering your mailbag questions. We've got a lot of juicy questions in our community page that I'm going to get to, some trade rumors that we're going to address here on the show. But first, go down and like this video if you love the Fins, if you hate the Jets, if you hate the Bills, and most importantly, if you hate producer Jack Lauderay's New England Patriots. Like this video, trying to win a challenge. That sports contest here at the office is Lauderay's giving me the middle finger. With that, we get into our first question from Bill Gilmore. Bill says, I say Xavier Howard will have eight interceptions this year. Are you taking the over or are you taking the under? What's your guess? Appreciate you, Bill Gilmore, serving as the bookie here on Dolphins today, setting it over under. Here is what Xavier did last year. 16 games played, five picks, 16 passes defended, two forced fumbles. Now, his career high in interceptions came the year prior in 2020 when he led the NFL in INTs with 10. So he's gotten above eight before. However, that is the only season he's had more than eight interceptions. So if I had to put money on it, I would bet the under on X's eight interceptions. I think he can get eight. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if he did, but that's a lot of interceptions. He only had five last year. I think he's a hell of a player, but I'm just going to say that I'm going to take the under that bill. Over under eight interceptions for X this year. Type O for over. Type U for under. Down in the comments section, what do you think on Xavier Howard's interception total this year? Let's get into our next question from Strzok Blackard. He says, what do you think about Tyreek Hill's, Tyreek Hill's comments on his podcast on why he moved away from the Chiefs? So here's kind of what he said in terms of why he left Kansas City. The number one reason that he left, even more so than money, at least coming from him, is that he felt underutilized in the Chiefs' offense. That was a little bit surprising to hear, but if you look at Tyree Kill's stat line, there were some games that he didn't get as involved as you would think. Number two is money. He wanted Devontae Adams' type of money after that Adams trade, and the Chiefs weren't willing to give him that. They really lowballed him on the offer they gave him. And number three, he wanted to be closer to home. His family's in South Georgia. He's from there. He's got a lot of family in Florida as well. That was very important to him in the end. Now, the second thing that Tyreek Hill said that that really had the sports world going nuts is that he thought that Tua is more accurate than Patrick Mahomes. And Stephen A. Smith said, stay off the weed to Tyreek Hill. But I got something to tell you, Stephen A. Smith. I think Tyreek Hill might have been right. Taking a look at these stats, so... This is really all completion percentage stats. So, Ty, or I should say Tua had a higher completion percentage. He also had a higher completion percentage above expected, which measures a quarterback's performance relative to the difficulty of their throw. So, basically what Next Gen Stats is measuring there is, is the throws that he made were, I should say, that the throws that that he made that were completed sometimes were not expected to be completed. So Tua was in the positive there, Patrick Mahomes in the negative. Tua also had a higher completion percentage on throws more than 20 yards down the field, and he had a quicker average time uh, per throw. You can go down and subscribe to the channel, youtube.com slash Dolphins News. We're bringing you Dolphins News. We're bringing you Dolphins Rumors. We'd appreciate you subscribing to the channel. Next question from Ed says, what tackle can we look at right now that we can trade for for a second or one of our third round picks in next year's draft? That's a great question. Obviously, offensive tackle is a team need for Miami. We've talked a lot about it. I don't know how I feel about Austin Jackson at the right tackle position. So I I was looking at NFLTradeRumors.com, and someone who came across that page was Makai Becton, who was a first-round pick two years ago, had a very promising rookie season, 
However, he suffered a knee injury last season, just played in one game, but now he's healthy, but he's still been in trade rumors this offseason as, uh, as the Jets may look to shop him. Here's what ESPN said in a recent article. Becton, nicknamed Big Ticket, delivered a big message Wednesday to his critics. I'm going to make them eat their words, he said at the conclusion of minicamp. Becton, who has battled injuries and a weight problem since his promising rookie year in 2020, sounded determined to change the narrative. In his first media availability since last Saturday, he showed up wearing a blue T-shirt that read, Big Bust. So Makai Becton, man, fighting back at the critics. Would you trade for this guy? Type T for trade or type P for pass. Now, it is worth noting that he is the Jets' left tackle. He's not going to be traded to Miami and play left tackle. Teron Armstead's going to be in that spot for the Finns, but you could slide him to right tackle, and I think he would be a far better option than anyone else you have on this team right now. Type T for trade or type P for pass. It's the pinned comment on today's video. When an ad break comes, go down and let me know what you think. Getting into our next question, it comes from Two Cents. What will the Dolphins' record be at the end of the regular season? I've been going back and forth on this, kind of looking at the Dolphins' schedule. I'm going to say 10-7. and seven. Uh, That is one win less than my record prediction initially the day after the schedule was released. I said 11-6. and six. I mean, look, this is a very tough Dolphins' schedule. But what I look at is this team finished 9-8 and eight last season, they upgraded, in my opinion, at the head coaching position. Mike McDaniel's going to change the culture in Miami. In fact, he already has. They upgraded in terms of two as weapons. The offensive line is a little bit better. This team will be much better than last year's team. I think they sneak into the playoffs as the seventh seed. You can go down, by the way, start your free trial at Aura.com slash chat sports. What Aura is going to do, they're going to provide financial fraud protection, identity theft protection, online and device security. They also offer family plans to protect up to five people. It's so important to protect your family members as well. So important, too, to shop, bank, and work online more safely and privately. There's so many hackers out there that are trying to steal your information, trying to compromise your credit cards. You want to stay safe online. You can start your 14-day free trial at Aura.com slash chat sports. Great deal we're giving you here on Dolphins today. Go and take advantage of it. That link going to be in the comments and the description of this video. Hello there, hello there. Ask, are the Dolphins making to, are the Dolphins going to make any more big splashes in NFL free agency or make a trade? I would say yes. In fact, I think a surprising move is going to be on the horizon. You know, we've talked a lot about J.C. Treader, Darrell Williams, some big name free agents that are still out there, but. With, with the way that this NFL offseason has gone, you can never count anything out. In fact, I would not be surprised if Chris Greer went out and just made this really blockbuster trade or, or something that we did not see coming. For a player that we haven't even talked about here on the show, that wouldn't surprise me knowing this Dolphins front office. John Michael Reyes says, who do you think will have the most sacks on the fence? Oh, that's a great question. Christian Wilkins was the, I should say, Emmanuel Logba was the sack leader last season. But I'm going to say Jalen Phillips, who just set the rookie sack record last season, eight and a half sacks. In fact, on a recent show, I predicted that he's going to have over 10 sacks this season. I think Jalen is in for a big year, too. He showed plenty of promise in his rookie season. Very athletic guy, can get to the quarterback. I love him as one of the edge rushers on this team. I think he has a really big year and even makes the Pro Bowl. Johan, what's going on, man? He says if Skylar Thompson performs well at OTAs, minicamp, preseason, all of that, do you think Miami is going to promote him to the backup quarterback behind Tua? Man, I'll tell you what, you know, Skyler is really uh, is really proved me wrong, I think. I gave the, the draft pick an F, but he's looked very good at OTAs and minicamp throughout the offseason, looked gr- look great at rookie minicamp as well. So I've become a pretty big Skyler Thompson fan. Now, do I think he's going to win the job over Teddy Bridgewater to be the backup quarterback? No, I think, uh, I think they gave Teddy a little bit too much money to come in and be the third-string quarterback. However, Teddy signed a one-year deal. 
So I think Skyler, after this season, could be the backup quarterback for two a long term. This year, probably going to be the practice squad quarterback, but I'm really excited to see what he's going to do in preseason games. Mighty Zane says, besides the offensive line, what other positions do you think the Miami Dolphins could go after during the next bunch of NFL cuts? Probably defensive line. You know, we, we've talked about that a lot on the show, maybe upgrade and bolstering the defensive line. And then as well as the linebacker position. You know, there's still some really quality free agent linebackers like Anthony Barr out there in free agency that, who knows, maybe the Dolphins could go out and sign. But I feel really good about the current roster situation on the Dolphins outside of the offensive line, right? I do not feel comfortable with the current offensive line. That is by far still the biggest Dolphins team need. What do you think is the biggest Dolphins team need? Go down in the comments section. Let me know. Is it defensive tackle? Is it center? Is it right tackle? Let me know what you think down in the comments section. Michael Rimbecki says, do you think the Dolphins will use Tyree Kill on special teams as a punt returner or as a kick returner? I know KC used them sometimes. Please answer, thank you. I've been a loyal fan since 1966. Remember that perfect season in 72. Michael, appreciate you watching, man. Appreciate the question. Um, I think it's possible, but you know, when you have a player like Tyreek Hill that you're giving $30 million to, you, you want to avoid him getting injured potentially on, on special teams. You want to kind of, I don't want to say limit him because he's obviously a stellar athlete, but you don't want, the last thing you want is Tyree Kill and a kick returner and, and getting hurt, right? So I don't think that's going to happen, but I will say that Mike McDaniel is going to find creative ways to use Tyreek this season. Waddle season. Penguin says, could Jerome Baker have a breakout season and dominate? He's one of the many talented linebackers right on this Dolphins team. I really like Jerome. He's coming off of a pretty good 2021 season. Five and a half sacks, 15 QB hits, 92 tackles, four passes defended. A pretty solid coverage linebacker that can get to the quarterback as well. And he is one of the two starting inside linebackers on this team. And, you know, Miami, we, we've talked a lot about, you know, how this is going to be the fastest show on turf offensively. But defensively, you look at some of these linebackers, man, they're all fast. They can all get to the quarterback. Duke Riley's been one of the biggest winners of the Dolphins offseason thus far. He's looked great in minicamp and OTAs. And then Channing Tendall, you drafted him, arguably the fastest linebacker in the draft. So I really like Jerome Baker. He fits this Dolphins defense really well. If anybody's in danger of losing their starting job, it's a Landon Roberts. And in fact, I think either Tindall or Riley will be starting in his spot by year's end. Appreciate y'all watching Dolphins today. If you haven't already, go down and subscribe to the channel. This has been Will Scott. Enjoy the rest of your weekend.